In a game where assassination techniques vary from an exploding golf ball to kicking a father onto his daughter's active race car, anything goes. Which is why I wanted to test the absolute limits. Can I beat Hitman 3 with just a banana? The rules are simple. The only item I will use to complete the entire game will be a banana. And every kill has to be a direct result of either slipping on or being hit with a banana. When someone suggested this to me, I honestly didn't think it was possible since only a couple maps even take place somewhere with large falls but after some scheming, I came up with some pretty creative solutions to make this work, and discovered some fun bugs in the process. So, let's begin. My first mission took me to a beautiful party in Dubai, where my goal was to eliminate two men named Marcus Stuyvesant and Carl Ingram. My initial plan was to get both of these targets to die at the same time by tricking them into skydiving, and hopefully getting them to slip and fall off of the building. This is where I ran into the first problem of the run limited supply. I can only take one banana with me per level, so I have to work with whatever supply I can find on the map. Also, throwing a banana causes it to no longer be usable, and there's no getting a banana back once it has been placed, so I need to manage my supply carefully. Getting these guys to slip on only one banana peel while skydiving requires a very precise placement, and requires at least two bananas, one per person. Luckily, this level has three for me to use, but this won't always be the case. I tried getting them to slip while skydiving, but unfortunately, it seems Marcus can't slip during his jumping animation, and Carl gets saved by this random metal platform that's here for some reason. So I had to move on to plan B, which was to start with Marcus. I brought Marcus over to a nearby ledge by telling him that I was his new personal guard. Once he and his guard were isolated, I knocked them both out with a banana and moved Marcus to be just on the edge of the building. I had to place him very carefully, since I only have a very small supply of bananas, and threw a banana at him to get the last push over the edge, causing him to fall to his death. I then moved on to Carl, and after trying and failing to get him to slip off of the building, I decided to use that annoying metal platform form to my advantage. Instead of making him slip on a banana peel, I got him to jump off the building and waited for him on the platform below. When he jumped, I threw my banana as hard as I could and knocked him out on his way down, preventing him from activating his chute and killing him. Just to show off, I used the skydiving exit to show how it's done and flew all the way over to my next mission in Dartmoor. My target this time is Alexa Carlisle, an old woman who is investigating the death of her brother while holding a fake funeral for herself. This time won't be so easy, since I can't knock her off of the top of the manor due to her guard railings. I needed to find another solution. After some exploring, I came up with a plan. There's a small pond in the garden out back. If I can knock out my target along with everyone between her and the pond, I can then drag her to the pond and hit her with a banana. So, I did. After clearing everything out, I put the plan into motion. When this happened, she lived. For reference, I also tried dumping her in two separate spots in the river, and she lived, despite being able to eliminate her by kicking her into the water in the exact same spot. I thought the run was over that's for nice. sure, she just wouldn't die from falling into water. But that's when I had one last idea. Remember how I said Alexa is holding a fake funeral? Well. There's a story mission that involves pushing her into her fake grave, which made me suspect that the grave would kill anything that fell in, no matter what. Lo and behold, I was right, and I buried Alexa with a throw of a banana and moved on to what I thought would be the hardest mission for sure, Berlin. Along with the final mission, I believed that this mission would be impossible to complete when I was first presented the challenge. I have to take out 5 of 10 guards who are trying to kill me, and the map is a seedy nightclub that only has 2 bananas on it as far as I can tell. I I only had one hope to complete this level, the canals that run along one edge of the map. But only one target ever stands near it, and while I was able to eliminate him without too much trouble by knocking him into the water, how could I ever knock four more targets into the water? Especially since every target tries to run away from the player when he's spotted, except for one map. Can you guess which one? That's right, Berlin. This is the only map to have guards as a target. As a result, by making the guards suspicious of me, I can get them to chase me all the way to the canal. Once they are here, I can knock them out with a banana and drag them to the very edge of the canal. I don't have enough bananas to push them in like I did with Marcus, so I had to wait for a guard to come wake them up. And when they did, I ran up and slapped them into the water one by one. I was able to repeat this process four different times, each time getting more and more chaotic, as eventually dozens of guards were swarming the area, all getting knocked out and waking each other up as I darted through the grass somewhat undetected. Eventually though, I was able to finish off the last guard, and even though it took him a weirdly long time to die, I finished up the level and left through the emergency exit. That exit led all the way to my next mission in China, 
I had two targets, Imogen Royce and a mysterious man named Hush. There's only one spot on this map where I can kill both of my targets, a laboratory deep underground. And in the very center of it, surrounded by guards, is a reactor with a pool of water to keep it cool. Royce will go down there on her own, and after I took out her personal bodyguard totally on purpose and not because I accidentally got caught, it was just me and her in there. I used a banana to bait her over to a dangerous ledge and tried to knock her in. It didn't go so well the first time, and I I learned something pretty interesting in the process. Depending on how you hit someone with it, characters will fall very differently when hit with a banana. If you hit them in the back, they will crumple and fall slightly forward. If they are an innocent and you hit them in the front, they will fall slightly backwards and crumple. Both are no good for knocking someone into the water. But, if you come at them from the side and surprise them, they will be launched left. Using this, I was able to launch Royce into the water below, and now for the much. I cleared out a huge section of the map, knocked out Hush, and began dragging him through an apartment building to eventually reach my destination. I hoped that dumping him off of a building would be enough, but it wasn't. I guess falling four stories is nothing compared to being gently pushed over a railing and falling one foot, which killed him instantly. Eventually, I arrived, and used a banana to knock his un conscious body into the water below. Now, if you're like me, you might be noticing an issue. He is unconscious and deep underwater, yet he is still alive. This is a cool glitch I found. If you knock an unconscious body into various locations, like with Alexa earlier, they will live. But if you knock them out and they fall into that exact same location, they will die. So I had to get myself noticed by the engineer who was watching over the facility, causing her to report me to a guard. Once that happened, I hid in a nearby vent like a little banana goblin, and when the guard came to wake Hush, I ran out, slapped him into the water with my banana, and scurried back into the vent to make my escape. And with that, the level was complete. So I moved on to Mendoza, Argentina, and I was hungry for style points. I needed to kill two targets, Tamara Vidal and Don Yates, two very influential figures in an evil organization. I knew that I could take them out by just hitting them off the side of a cliff with a banana, but that sounded too easy. For Tamara, I brought back the strategy from Berlin. I activated a story mission by listening in on a conversation, which caused her to head towards the bottom of the map, right next to a water decoration. I then knocked her out with a banana and used the trick from Berlin to get a guard to pick her up, allowing me to send her flying into the fountain. But that wasn't stylish enough, so I upped the ante for Don Yates. I came up with a plan. Step 1. I clear out all of the guards on a mountain path leading up to his mansion, leaving only one guard who leans against a railing. Step 2. I knock out my target along with everyone in my way and drag his body out to the side of a mountain. Step 3. I use the bananas I collected earlier in the level to create a trail for the leaning guard I left behind to follow. This leads him to finding Don Gates and waking him up. But, instead of just hitting him off the cliff, instead I went with step 4 and decided to place three banana peels as the guard was waking my target up, and I used the last banana to KO the guard. Step 5. I start dragging the body in order to scare Don Yates into running away. This causes him to have more speed going into the banana peel, slipping backwards and rolling off the cliff. Now that's deserving of style points. Time for the final mission, the one that I thought would surely be impossible to complete with only a banana. Unfortunately, I was half right. It's impossible to complete with a banana, not because there's no way to get a banana kill, but because there aren't any ways to get a banana on this map. The game doesn't let you bring anything with you or smuggle anything onto this map, and there are no bananas already in the level. But I had one last idea. You see, if you're a real sneaky guy, you can download a mod that completely randomizes all of the item spawns in a level. If I were to download this and play through the map a few times, eventually I would get a banana. I felt the spirit of the run was more about beating the game with a banana, and getting stopped on the last mission by restrictive game design felt lame. So I activated the randomizer and ran through the level for a couple hours. Since I couldn't attack any guards, I snuck through the level looking for a banana, and eventually I found it. It was waiting for me in the very back of the train right next to my target. I knocked him out, dragged him to the very end of the train, and knocked him off the map the same way I did to Marcus at the very beginning. It all came full circle in the end. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe for more content like this in the future.